What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in terms of my trading. I actually ended up buying one stock today that I want to share with you guys here in a couple of minutes, and I also want to share with you guys a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm looking to trade here in the middle of September, heading into the middle of September of 2019 so if you guys find value in this video if you find the way i break things down helpful feel free to go down below and hit that like button i would really appreciate that and consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market investing and trading and join our strive smart discord group chat and our facebook group all of those are linked down below in the description box so without further ado guys let's get right into it the s p 500 ticker symbol spx ended up closing the day today up 96 cents up 0.03 percent which is pretty interesting because we were actually red for the majority of the day today you can see we gapped down we hit a low of about 29.57 we saw a double bottom there a breakout we pulled back held a higher low then we ended up closing the day on this upswing so we closed the day up green, right, 96 cents, but the majority of the day, we were in the red. I think the lowest point we were down on the S&P today was about 20 points. Don't quote me on that, but it was roughly 20 points um, during this time period right here. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 73 points today, so pretty good green day from the Dow, up 0.28%. And very similar, guys, to the S&P here. We gapped down right? We saw a bottom at about 26,700, not quite a double bottom, but we did find that bottom at about 10.55 a.m. Eastern. Then we broke out of the moving average resistances, and we ended the day off on a very nice upswing, almost hitting $27,000. And the NASDAQ right now, guys, this is the future. So right now it's down about eight points, but if I pull up my phone very quickly, the NASDAQ ended up closing very flat. Um, it actually ended up closing red, down $3.28 at the close, down 0.04%. And you can see the NASDAQ very similar to the S&P and the Dow. Um, we traded down this morning. We got a double bottom here on the support at around $77.50. We broke out of the moving average resistances, made some higher lows, and then we ended up closing on this nice upswing and if you guys have a catalyst um, what you guys think ended up uh, pushing the markets here in the last hour um, hour and a half drop that down below in the comment section I would love to know what you guys have to think about um, what ended up pushing up the markets today so going back to the S&P and uh, we'll start off with the S&P then we'll break down the Dow and the Nasdaq let's take a look at some technicals here on the 184 hour chart we've been talking about the S&P being being in this channel between 2950 and around 2990, right? And why why is 2990 the resistance level? Because if we zoom in a bit on the 5 day 5 minute, we can see we've struggled very very much over these past 4 or 5 trading days breaking out of that level, right? We gapped up on the uh, 5th of September, we hit 2985, roughly 2990, we got rejected, right? The next day we tried to break out of 20 985 2990 we got rejected the next day we gapped up we literally hit 2990 we got rejected again and today we gapped down we double bottomed at 2960 roughly we broke out and now we're trending right in the middle of the channel between 2950 and 2990 at around 2979 so at this point guys you know we're in the middle of this channel right so we're either going to potentially pop up tomorrow or we're going to sell down to test the support and how am I going to identify which way we're going well tomorrow morning I'm going to be looking at the futures and how large cap stocks are doing pre-market right let's say the futures are gapping down tomorrow we're down half a percent let's say we're down 10 15 points on the SPX that's going to be telling me we may be pulling down to retest 2950 or maybe even that 2960 level that we double bottomed that this morning but let's say on the flip side 
the futures are gapping up. Let's say we're up 10, 15 points. We're up half a percent in the morning. The entire market's green. That may be hinting towards, okay, we may be going back up to test 29.90 and potentially break that. And if we do break that, guys, let's say we get to the 3,000 point, that's going to be very, very bullish on the S&P. So at this point, the way I'm looking at it is I just want to see the direction that the S&P is picking before I do end up deciding deciding on what trades I'm going to involve myself with tomorrow in terms of any potential day trades, maybe some market ETF trades, some uh, velocity, not velocity, uh, volatility ETFs, stuff like that, right? So just keep an eye on the futures, keep an eye on large caps pre-market. That's going to really tell us what direction we are pushing in. But overall, guys, you know, the fact that we did close above this 50 SMA today on the hourly chart, that's a good sign that we are as of right now holding the uptrend and potentially going to continue to move up from here because this 50 SMA as you guys can see, this has been a point of support over these past 20 days. Well, really from the 23rd of August, we bottomed at about 2860. We broke out of the 50 SMA of resistance. We pulled down and we held it as a support, which is the first point where we hold, where we held it rather as a support. Then we broke up from there. We gapped up. We gapped up again. And now we ended up pulling down. We got the double bottom on top of the 50 SMA again. And now we broke out towards the close of the market. So at this point, despite us trending in the middle of that channel, like I said, the smaller time frames are telling us that the S&P is a bit bullish right now due to the close that we saw today, due to that upswing, due to the price action close that we saw. So that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. We're bullish just because of the double bottom pop that we saw on the S&P today on this smaller time frame chart. If we're going Going to the Dow Jones on the hourly chart, you guys can see a very similar scenario, right? We're actually trending above the 50 SMA on the Dow Jones. We pulled down. We kind of confirmed this level as a support at around 26,700. We're actually breaking out to potentially break out of this 26,890 level of resistance from literally yesterday. If we break out of there, that's going to be a run straight to 27,000 in my personal opinion. So very bullish looking right now on the Dow Jones, at least on this hourly chart. And if we take a look very quickly on the 184 hour chart, we can see that we're actually successfully holding and breaking out of this level of support at around 26, what level is this? Right around 26, uh, 70, roughly 26, 670, right? This was a resistance back in the May, April months of 2019. We broke out of it um, just recently, making it a new support. And now again, we're about to test 27,000, roughly 26,900. If we break that, that's going to be a good sign that, hey, we may be going up to all time high on the Dow Jones, which is at around $27,400. So right now, the Dow is looking very good um, for a continuous uptrend here. And just watch those levels, guys. And of course, watch those, you know, uh, uh, the Dow stocks, right? Watch the Dow futures in general tomorrow morning to see what direction are they pushing for the most part? Are they gapping up? Are they gapping down? That should give us a hint at what the market's going to look like, at least for the first 30 minutes, hour, maybe half of the day tomorrow, right? Just use those futures. Pre-market is very, very important um, for anybody out there trading. So that's the Dow. NASDAQ, very quickly, guys, let's take a look at it. It's clear here on the four-hour chart that we struggled to get out of 78.75. This was a point of resistance back in April, May of 2019. That was before that big sell-off in May heading into June. From June, we bottomed at about 69.50. We popped all the way to 8,000, pulled down, we held 7,500, and then we broke out of the 180 SMA. I believe that was a couple of days ago here. And if we were to break out of this level here, guys, which would have been a huge bullish move, you know, we would have potentially hit those all time highs at 8,000 or at least try to test those all time highs. But the fact that we got rejected. It's not looking too good, right? But the one positive thing is that we are holding this 50 SMA support here and the 7750 general area of support right now. 
on this pullback, right? That's a good sign that we're holding this uptrend that we've been on over the past couple of days here. You guys see how this was a resistance. We broke out of it. Now it's a support, right? And that support, again, is putting us on top of the old resistance and that 50 SMA. And if we're zooming in a bit on the 20-day, one hour, you guys can actually see um, we're actually holding the 180 SMA on this hourly chart. So what would I look for for a breakout on the NASDAQ? Um, ideally, on this hourly chart, I would want to see a breakout above this 50 SMA of resistance, right? It's clearly a resistance right now. We got rejected multiple times um, under this level. And and ultimately a break into the 7,900 level. That would be very ideal for a continuous push here in the NASDAQ and for it to potentially hit those all-time highs again. So overall, guys, that's what the markets are looking like. Nothing crazy. Today was kind of a boring day. Um, again, we gapped down in the morning. We ended up closing on a nice ups upswing, which is giving me some bullish sentiment heading into tomorrow. But we have to just keep an eye on the futures because who knows, guys, they might gap down heavily tomorrow, which would change my whole entire perspective on the market, which is why day-by-day -day technical analysis is is critical. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about the markets right now. I love talking to you guys, so don't feel shy to drop that comment. And let's get right into what I personally ended up doing today. No day trading, no day trading, but you did see in the title that yes, I ended up buying a stock right now today to swing trade, and I got in at a very good price point, in my opinion at least. And that stock, if you're in the group chat, the Discord chat, which again is linked down below in the description, you saw that I ended up buying this ticker symbol ATV. I guys and ATVI it's been one that we've been watching as a community for a long time now and me personally for months right it might be since really this drop that I've been watching at the Activision Blizzard like crazy right we dropped from 85 down to 40 dollars $40 was a very strong support. I'm not sure if that was a long-term support on the three-year. Let me just check. Um, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. The support on the three-year would be 35, but we actually found that double bottom at 40, which is good. And from there, we saw a resistance at about $48, right? And if we zoom into the 184 hour, you guys can see we broke out of $48. And this is where I started heavily watching at V because this was a very bullish move. The way I have you know, the support res uh, and resistance levels laid out here, you know, you can clearly see that once we broke out of this 48 level, we ran to the next resistance very quickly at about 5170. And this is why it's important to draw these out because they're kind of like levels that the stock could potentially get to next if it were to break that resistance. So it's important to kind of have these drawn out and it gives you opportunities to list exit points that you're potentially looking to get out at, you know, entry points, whatever it may be. And it's very easy for you to really calculate risk reward with a stock, um, you know, when you're doing these lines here, these trend lines, right? And of course, looking at the moving averages as well. But anyway, this stock has been extremely bullish. 48, we broke it. We ended up breaking 52 yesterday. Um, not yesterday, a couple of days ago. And I was looking either yesterday, I talked about this in the video, or was it the day before? I forget. But I was talking about how I either want to get a pullback and a retest at $52, which we didn't get, or I wanted to get a breakout to the top to potentially test $56, which is what we ended up getting. So today, I took a position on this 20-day, one-hour chart, and you'll be able to see it better. I took a position as we pulled down this morning and bounced on this 50 SMA on this hourly chart. What this told me was that... The stock wasn't looking to sell off to potentially go back down to 52 because we ended up holding that 50 SMA, right? If we ended up dumping here, this is not going to be a point where I would, I would enter the stock. This would be a point where I'd wait it out, I'd feel it out to see where it ends up bottoming out. But again, we ended up holding that, we popped, and that gave me incentive to potentially get in because I knew if it were to pop here, it's going to go up to test 56 most likely, and if we test 56 and break 56, the next level we might be getting to, if we look on the one-year, one-day chart, is 
is going to be $62, which is this next resistance. So this is my goal here, guys. My goal is to build this position into the high 50s and then sell off at 62 ish dollars maybe even lower at 60 to 61 dollars and granted this is not most likely going to be a swing trade that is going to last a week right this is most likely going to be a swing trade that might be a two month swing trade right a month two month swing trade and of course i'll let you guys know but as of now i'm in at about 55 ish dollars 55 ish dollars and 10 cents again i got Got in on the pop here, ended up entering the position right around here this morning, and I'll show you guys on the one day, one minute. We pulled down, held 54, and then we started to run up. We started to break moving average resistances, and I ended up just buying some here on ATV. So I'm actually happy for my entry point, or happy at my entry point about it, because I have some buffer right now built in at V. I'm already up a decent chunk right now. I'm up like 1.45%. So this is pretty good, right? This is pretty good. And ideally, I want to start adding more money into at V as we start to break into the 56s, 57s. I think that's going to be very, very good. And overall right now, the catalyst that's driving at V is... Very good earnings report a couple of weeks ago. It was actually on the 8th of August. They reported an extremely good earnings. They actually blew analyst estimates in terms of EPS. I believe they beat by 70%. It seems like since then... It's just been running up the stock, right? The stock's been running up. I believe an analyst actually upgraded it to a buy recently, which stocks, when you see analysts upgrade them to buys, right? This could affect the stock's price. Sometimes it doesn't, but a lot of the times it does. We can look at another one here in a couple of minutes that the stock price was heavily affected by a um, hedge fund hopping into it. And I'll talk to you guys about that in a couple of minutes here. And another thing about AtV is... There, there's actually a video game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, coming out that I think is a heavily anticipated Call of Duty, and this might pump up the stock as well if the initial release does well, if people enjoy the game, etc., etc., right? So I think there's a lot of good things going for AtV here, and to be quite honest, guys, you know, the stock's just been hammered, and at this point, I think it's time for it to start reversing, and the technicals don't lie. Um, it's clearly showing that there's a lot of bullish sentiment right now in at v so again the goal with this it's probably going to be a longer term swing trade and i'll let you guys know i'm looking to give it some wiggle room here um the stop loss right now is at about two percent but again i have that buffer built which is very very good so the stock will need to drop now at least three to four percent for it to even trigger my stop loss so at v that's all i did today guys scaling into this position and uh that's the goal so let me know down below in the comments what are your your thoughts on at v what are your thoughts on the markets in general again like i said and what are you trading right now so let's talk about that stock that's actually being pumped up right now because a hedge fund, a big, big hedge fund with around, I believe, 40 billion assets under management got into this stock and saying that this stock should be at $60 or saying that the price target for this stock is $60. And we'll see how that stock reacted. And that stock is T, guys, ticker symbol T, A-T-N-T. -T. And let me show you guys how this stock reacted when we got that news, right? The stock, if we go to the 5-day, five 5-minute, five or 5-day, 15-minute, it doesn't really matter. We popped from 36 all the way up to 40. We pulled down, and this honestly opened up a nice 8% margin of profit. And from this pull down, guys excuse me, we've been steady uptrending, right? We haven't broken the moving average support levels. We've been holding this level and we've actually hit a higher low and it, we closed on a nice little upswing here. So this is definitely a stock that I'm looking to enter in tomorrow as a swing trade. Again, there was a $3.8 billion um, stake here from this from this, um, uh, what's it called? From this hedge fund with forty billion dollar asset under management. And typically, you know, stocks react to analysts. But when people and big hedge funds put a lot of money into a stock, and the public hears about it, this brings a lot of positive sentiment to a stock for the most part, right? Which is what we're seeing right now with T. And again, these technicals are looking very good, guys. Honestly, this could open up an even better play than at 
at V in the short term here, and uh, I'm looking to get in and capitalize on this tomorrow for sure. Um, this is looking like a swing trader's heaven right now, to be honest, guys, but we might get a pullback like I showed you guys, or like depicted by these candlesticks, or not candlesticks, these trend lines here. We might pull down, test that 50 SMA, who knows, but overall, this is on the top of my watch list, and I'm looking to enter in it in my swing trade account. So another one that I'm looking at here is, of course, UGAZ, guys, ticker symbol UGAZ, and this is playing out kind of exactly to how I pictured it. So yesterday, I ended up day trading UGAZ, I didn't talk about that because I actually didn't make a market update video yesterday, a trading update video. I talked about actually my worst investment right now in terms of capital gains loss or capital loss rather. And you can go check that out in yesterday's uploads. But yesterday, now that, I, now that we're talking about trading updates, yesterday I ended up day trading UGAS. And I noticed how it was extremely overbought here on the one hour chart. RSI was screaming overbought. And I was thinking to myself... This could be opening up a nice opportunity to either play DGAS on the pullback, which I didn't do, or just waiting for you guys to pull down and to maybe retest this 50 SMA, which has been a support over the past couple of days on this hourly chart, which it seems like it's doing that, guys. So ideally tomorrow, I would love to see for a pull down to... $20 and for it to retest here, I think that could be a very good entry point on you guys. And overall, we talked about how, you know, if we broke $18, we were going to run to 20. You know, we talked about that on the channel here. We ended up doing that. We talked about how if we broke 20, we'd run up to 23, which is the next resistance. We ended up doing that. And now we're pulling down. Ideally, I would want to see the hold on 20 and then the run back up to 23. I think that could be the move here on you guys which is around a 12% margin of profit. And for those of you guys that don't know, UGAS goes up whenever natural gas is going up at a 3x rate, right? And natural gas here, we hit 260 this morning, 262 roughly, actually 265 almost. Now we're pulling down to retest the bottom of this channel at around 255. So this is opening up a very good dip buy on UGAS in my opinion, guys. Just watch it tomorrow. If we bottom at 255, hopefully this happens before the market at around 9 a.m. Eastern Standard so we can catch the move because if this happens overnight, guys, if we wake up and natural gas is already up here, that's going to suck because if you didn't hold you guys overnight, you're not going to capitalize on that move unless you catch it pre-market somehow. But um, yeah, hopefully it just bottoms out into the market open tomorrow and then we could catch it on this upswing. Again, you guys is going to be a very good play if that does end up happening. So one more stop. Let's see my notes here very quickly. I think I have one more to talk about. Actually, two more very quickly here. Roku is one of them. Roku right now hit a high at 176. And for those of you guys that don't know, Roku has been one of the hottest stocks in the stock market. I think Roku and Shopify are two of the hottest stocks. You can see this one, Shopify, went from $100 to $400 in a matter of six months. That's pretty crazy, right? Roku went from $26 all the way to $176 in that same time period in six months, which is ridiculous, right? And now both of these stocks are actually cooling off. So honestly, I'm watching both of them, right? Because they're both approaching um, moving average supports on the four-hour chart. I think actually Shopify already broke the moving average support. Yep. So I'm just watching for a potential bounce back, right? If the heat in these stocks continue, right? If, if the hot streak continues, this could just be a very simple, dip by right and if we get a positive catalyst this could end up running these stocks up and honestly I think it's a good idea to just simply watch them because they've been extremely hot but be cautious because stocks like this sometimes when their run is over, they can lose a lot of their money, right? Or not a lot of their money, a lot of the uh, gains they've made. If a lot of people start selling out, let's say there's a negative catalyst, the stock can really get killed, right? One example, which, you know, these Tilray is not on the level that Shopify and Roku are. I think Roku and Shopify are more established businesses, more established stocks. But uh, Tilray is an example of a stock that ran up ridiculously. And then it sold off all the way down to where it was before it ran up, right? This one went from 20 bucks to 300 bucks 
all the way back down to 20 bucks, guys. So that is an example of a stock that popped and then it sold off all the way back down, right? And I'm sure a lot of you guys remember Tilray, but Shopify... Roku, I think they're a bit more stable of businesses than Tilroy, uh, Tilroy or Tilray rather, and uh, that's just my opinion, right? So I'm watching those um, in specific, Shopify and Roku, and another one I'm watching is Caterpillar ticker symbol CAT. So CAT filled the gap from 120 up to 130 very successfully here over the past couple of days, and now we're gapping up above 130, looking to potentially hold this level as a new support. And I think if we successfully do this, the next gap we could fill is up to 140, and that offers around an 8 to 9 percent margin of profit. But one thing to be a bit worrisome about here, uh, to, to just be a bit careful about, is the RSI is overbought, right? So let's say we pop up tomorrow again, we pull down aggressively, we consolidate a bit here for a day or two. That should bring the RSI down to a healthy spot, maybe 50, and this could be a really a good entry point to get into Caterpillar ticker symbol CAT. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Tomorrow, I'm just playing it safe, right? Watching the markets, futures, pre-market, very, very important. And I'm very interested in trading um, Roku, Shopify, of course, Atvi, I'm already in that. And AT&T probably is at the top of my list right now because the catalyst involved with AT&T is very positive right now. And I think there's a lot more upside in AT&T as of right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further stock market videos, further breakdowns of stocks, my trades, my thoughts on the market. Hit that subscri subscribe button. Hit that notification bell, and uh, that's it, guys. So I appreciate your time. It really means a lot, especially for those of you guys sticking to the end of the video. You guys are the real MVPs. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.